Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. Speed's if good. you saw my previous video about flying to airfields that are not on the charts, then you'll see how I plan, prepare and fly to these strips using nothing more than online maps and a verbal brief. Well, this time we're continuing that flight and visiting Barling, another small airfield that is uncharted and to make things a little more spicy, it's in controlled airspace, just a few miles from an international airport. As I continue climbing out of Annisfield, I call up South End Radar to obtain a Class D zone entry. South End Radar, Golf, November Juliet, Charlie Zulu for zone entry for Barling. November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, South End, Pipes message. Golf, November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, support cruiser, just left the private site um, to the north of Ossie Island, uh, climbing through 700 feet, 1022, and uh, zone entry for Barling, please. Oh, Charlie Zulu, Roger QNH, correct, squawk 4575. 4575, 1022, Golf, Charlie Zulu. Direct to Golf, uh, Kilo Sierra Hotel in, you're passing 1000 feet. Golf, Kilo Sierra Hotel in, your south end, Director, good afternoon, thank you. You're clear to leave south end, controlled airspace now, VFR, not above 2400 feet. Golf, Hotel in, you're clear to leave controlled airspace, and not above 2400 feet, Golf, Hotel in, you. Golf, November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, it's clear to enter south end, controlled airspace, on track, Barling, VFR, not above 2000 feet. Golf, November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, clear to enter, direct Barling, uh, not above 2000 feet. Uh, basic service, on radar only to it. Golf, Charlie Zulu, that basic service at the moment, in quarter of a mile, radar control service. Quarter of a mile, radar, radar control, Golf, Charlie Zulu. Charlie Zulu, report on final at Barling. Report on final at Barling, Golf, Charlie Zulu. I get a squawk, and then shortly afterwards, a zone entry clearance from the controller with a maximum altitude restriction of 2,000 feet. This is normal for a VFR zone entry or crossing. Golf Whiskey November, now left controlled airspace basic service, support when you wish to change your orbit frequency. Uh, basic service, we can switch, uh, probably Luton radar 129 to normal 550. Golf Whiskey November, roger, and uh, two aircraft manoeuvring ahead of you uh, around the west side of Hanningfield Reservoir. Keep good lookout, squawk contiguity, free call Luton, bye bye. Call security, free call Luton. Goodbye, Golf Whiskey November. Once inside the controlled airspace, I am under radar control, which basically means I have to obey the controller's instructions, but must also maintain VFR and my own terrain clearance. If I was unable to stay VFR or follow my routing as cleared, I must let him know. The controller will, however, advise me of any traffic that could affect me whilst I'm in the zone. It's just a 10 minute flight from Annisfield to Barling and I've taken a direct routing. With less than five minutes until I arrive at Barling, I would normally be getting a printed plate of the airfield out now and selecting an approach on Sky Demon. But as I have no chance for Barling or have any help from Sky Demon, there's not much to prep for until I get there. However, I have made a small sketch of the runway layer on my kneeboard. I cross the river Crouch to the west of Burnham-on-Sea and soon get a view of the strip. It's a light wind anyway, isn't it? Five knots. I'm not too sure of the wind direction on the ground, yeah. as it is luckily very light. Barling has two runways, a north-south one at 450 metres and a shorter one at just over 400 metres at roughly 0422. I used Bing Maps this time for my planning as the aerial photography seemed to be more up to date than those in Google Earth. Using more than one source of aerial imagery is something worth noting when planning. Also my mate Chris had sent me some aerial photos and given me a good brief. As I arrive over the top of the airfield, the two main runways stand out quite well. 
There's no activity on, on the ground and South End would let me know of any traffic. So I feel it's safe to manoeuvre at low level as required. And as I'm talking to South End with the instruction to report final, I have no need to announce any other position reports. I keep my view locked onto the airfield, especially important as the GPS is of little help. Initially I take up a right hand circuit for the northerly runway, but as I recheck the non-standard windsock, it's actually a pair of high-vis trousers on a pole which I found out later, it is clearly showing that the easterly runway is more suitable. So I change direction and take up a left turn to enter a late downwind leg. Tower traffic left at 11 o'clock, three and a half miles south of the centre line, manoeuvring at Barling Airfield. It's a sports cruiser currently indicating below 1,000 feet. Thank you, look at the traffic, go for the turtle. Cough Tower Tower, contact South End Tower 127, decimal 730. Bye bye. Tower 127, decimal 730. Thank you, go for the turtle. Cough Charlie Zulu's left base uh, for Barling. So south, then surface wind 100 degrees, 6 knots, and once on the ground, support contiguity, bye-bye. We'll go on the ground, contiguity, got the chance to do. Tower 127, I turn left base, then position myself for final, at less than a mile for runway 04. Brakes off, undercarriage is down, fixed. Just switch, fuel pumps on, we're hatched, we're harnessed. Always clear. A little slip as we cross the fence and we're down and stopped in under 150 metres. After a chat with my mate Chris and a look at his aircraft, I make a quick call to Southend's ATC on the phone and get a squawk and clearance, stipulating I must depart within the next 15 minutes. So I jump back into the aircraft, give Chris the thumbs up, do a quick backtrack and perform my power checks at the end of the same runway I landed on. Then line up and select full power. As Chris is filming my departure, I do a bit of showing off and I buzz along the runway, then do a zoom climb. Just for fun and as soon as I start climbing, I call South End. South End Radar, Golf November Juliet, Charlie Zulu. Golf November Juliet, Charlie Zulu, South End Radar, hello again. And uh, you're cleared to depart now if you wish to the north or northwest on track towards Northfield VFR, not above altitude 2,000 feet. Report your level now, please. Uh, Golf Charlie, so they're just climbing through, for, just coming up on 500 feet, 1022. And if possible, if the uh, danger areas are cold, I'd like to go along the seafront, if, if possible, any level. Golf Charlie, to the way, if the danger area is not active, then uh, make a turn to the south, and if you follow the coast around VFR, and uh, 
Obviously not above 2,000 feet, otherwise I need just to change level. Not above 2,000 feet and uh, along the sea from via Farkov. Charlie City. I take advantage of the lovely evening and fly along the seafront at South End and Canvey Island on my way home to North Weald. Flying into these strips for the first time with no charts requires careful planning using all the tools you can. But my best advice would be to find a pilot that flies a similar aircraft to yours who has visited the field to give you their experiences of it. I would also advise choosing a benign weather day for your first visit. You don't want the added stress of fighting the wind or struggling with poor viz. These places really help with all your flying skills including planning, situational awareness and aircraft handling. But remember, if at any time you don't feel confident, go somewhere else or try another day. If you need some inspiration and want to try some short strips, why not watch this video next that I've put together of 10 grass strips in only 10 minutes. Thank you again for watching, but as always, I need to remind you that I'm not an instructor and these videos are all based on my personal experience as a private pilot here in the UK. Thank you again, fly safe guys and short field out.